day everybody. Well for today's little HVAC autopsy we're going to be cutting open this Sam Scum R22 rotary refrigeration compressor. Uh, I found it in a car park pretty much as it was. God knows what it was doing there but um, yeah I just saw it laying in with a pile of bricks and thought oh I love that. Bring it home, cut it open and uh, show you all what's inside because these are uh, very differently arranged to the way the uh, your domestic reciprocating refrigeration compressor works. I've actually put this one on wheels as you can uh, clearly see. But yeah, that was the, uh, the Tecumseh one that I've uh, done a few videos on. But um, yeah, you got your piston and your conrod down inside there and your crankshaft driven off the motor. But on these ones here, you've got your motor is about here and you've actually got a uh, pump mechanism with an incentric rotor and a vane which rides on the uh, the rotor as it's going around in its chamber and as the rotor goes around it's pulling suction gas in through this accumulator winding it round and compressing it up against the seal and then forcing it out through the uh, discharge reed valves and out the discharge tube here because unlike a uh, a um sorry domestic fridge compressor which all in here inside the uh the metal housing that's the low pressure side and only this tube here and the muffler that's the high pressure side as you can see coming out there and those holes there they just go to nothing they're just um because part of the the cooling gas that comes back is what keeps the uh compressor cool and it's only this tube here that has the uh the high pressure gas but on these, it's low pressure coming in through here. That's actually a discharge, sorry, a um, suction accumulator. Your gas comes in, there's a tube that goes all the way out the centre and a little baffle. And it basically traps any liquid refrigerant and uh, evaporates it before it gets into the uh, pump mechanism. Because if you get that in, you get slugging and you definitely don't want that in your uh, compressor. But so yeah, you got your suction gas coming in and all of the uh, around the motor and everything. That's your high pressure, high temperature discharge. But uh, anyway, I'll get this set up on a jig and get the grinder. And I'm just going to start by cutting the accumulator and that uh, clamp off. And also we'll take the top off. Well, a bit of time later. And it's finally come off. There you have it. A lot of dirt and rust inside it. I don't know how long this thing's been out in the weather for. But, uh, yeah, I've only just had it open. Good thing is there's still oil on it. But, yeah, there's very thick steel. Unfortunately, I think there's more cutting to do. Anyway, I'll, uh, clean this up a bit and probably start cutting down it because I've got to figure out how long this, uh, stator is. I'm guessing it probably comes down to about here or something. N really not so sure on that. Well, there's something I really didn't anticipate that will be in this mixture of oil and water. There's quite a lot of it. Always be careful of that when you find old refrigerant compressors that have been out of their units for some time. That is foul smelling stuff as well. There's more rust in water in there then there is bloody oil I hate to think of what the pump mechanism and everything's gonna be like it's sort of still turned over but it's completely locked up now so it doesn't look too good unfortunately low being um refrigerant oil which is actually hygroscopic which means it absorbs moisture and completely rusts out whatever steel is in contact with it it's not as bad now, which is good. Anyway, I might uh, put this thing up and uh, continue cutting it. Well, a bit more time later and I did eventually get the uh, stator off. It's a fairly big stator as well, actually. It's, um must have a fair bit of talk to it. But, uh, yeah, I'm guessing the way they do it is they heat the uh, metal housing up and then they actually press first the uh, pump assembly in and then they... Uh, weld it in place and then they actually um press this pump into it or oh, sorry not the pump the uh they then press the stator in over that 
once I've uh, balanced it and centralized it and everything. But, uh, I did manage to free this thing up. It's uh, not as bad as I was expecting it to be, which is the good thing. But, um, yeah, you can hear the valve still working in it and uh, compressing gas. There's a lot of rust in there. I don't know how long this thing's been out in the weather for, but it's been there for a long time. It's pretty nasty. Duh. Anyway, I'm guessing probably the way to get the pump out of this uh, bottom housing would be to uh, probably put like a U-cut around each of these spot welds. Because there's three of them. There's one here, one here, and one here. And I should be able to just pull the whole lot out of that. Duh. You can see that's the seal in there that I was talking about. That rides on the, uh, the rotor as this goes round. There's its spring down the bottom, as you can just see. If I can get the camera to focus on it. Yeah, there it is there. There's a um, bit like a uh, leaf spring sort of thing, made out of a bit of wire. That holds onto this seal here and keeps it pressed up against the, uh, the rotor, which will be inside this pump assembly here. But, uh, I'll have a go at getting that out, and then we can uh, pull the pump apart and see how bad it is inside. Uh, well my friends that is the heart of the rotary compressor right there that's the main pump mechanism that's the motor rotor with its balancing weights and uh yeah I've been able to get it out at long last basically what I've had to do as you can see I've um actually cut the uh the spot welds on it um there's one of the other sides for it that's the uh um where the suction tube went in, which is down there. I don't want to touch it too much because my hands have got metal filings and whatnot on them. But, uh, you can see you got these little spot welds. And what I did is just cut it out and lift the whole lot out. And then once it was down, I was able to uh, bust off all of these. But I've got one idea on how they actually put these together but um, I'm not actually sure if it's how they actually do it but I'm guessing they are the actual cylinder starts off as just a flat piece of steel that comes in on a roll and they um, basically form it into a cylinder and weld up one side as you can see it's uh, there's what looks like a seam there and they must weld the whole thing together as one piece and then they uh, press this pump in before they put this bottom triangular base on because that's got the mounting lug so it can be mounted into a uh, an air conditioner or a refrigerator or whatnot. I've never seen a refrigerator with a uh, rotary compressor in it but they may exist, you never know. But, uh, yeah, I'm guessing they press this pump in far from the bottom end and spot weld it in place as I've broken the spot welds on it. And then they... Uh, heat up this top part which is actually you can see it's slightly blue in color from where it looks like it's been getting hot I'm guessing they then so once that's really hot they then drop the stator in and uh, align it with the rotor so it's not going to uh, strike on it and then let it shrink tight and grab onto the stator holding it in place but there's no actual uh, some of the scroll compressors have got like little mounting lugs that that actually bolts onto and so it just sits above the arm um, the pump although in a scroll compressor the pumps actually up the top not at the bottom which it is in this case but then once all of that in they then uh put the top on and weld it up it's uh the same as how the uh, the fridge compressors are welded it's to stay uh, the seam weld right along the top but you cut just below that like what i've done you can actually pry it off and yeah it's absolutely horrible they're not usually that colour when they are. They come out. They're usually silver, normal steel colour. But that's uh, that's had weather and all sorts through it. Water. Although when I found it was sitting upright and the the um discharge and suction tubes were completely blocked up with dirt, so I'm guessing that's probably going to have a uh, quite a bit of water inside it as well. Well, that's all copper, amazingly. What I'll do is I'll take that in schools when I get time through the week and actually part it on the lathe 
and I'll bring it home again and do another video on that and show you what's inside it. But anyway, the, the main bit, which is why I opened it, is the pump. Basically under this end cover, which is just bolted on, is the uh, incentric lobe and the seal, which you can see up inside there. That's its spring, which keeps it pressed up against the rotor and just keeps it moving, oscillating almost, as the uh, rotor goes round. Duh. What I'll do is I'll probably do this in a separate video. I'll uh, take this all apart, clean it out, and run it open and actually show you what the uh, the movement of the rotor and the seal look like. I might uh, see what slow speed motors I've got and just get it going at a couple of RPM just to uh, give you a good idea on how it works. But, uh, that's everything inside a rotary compressor. It's a trail of destruction all the way along here and some foul looking oil I don't know what I'm going to do with that but uh anyway, thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed that stay tuned for the rebuild on the pump might have a go at seeing if I can make that into a vacuum pump or an air compressor or something thanks for watching